Hey everyone, finally back in the workshop and the mission today is to get that damn pulley off the engine. So before I get started, just want to say thank you for all the really nice comments we had on the last MR2 video both regarding our big news and all the great tips we had for getting this pulley off. Um, one of the most common ones we had was get the engine off the stand onto the floor and put the flywheel back on and use that to hold the engine, so that's what I'm going to try. So, this is the new plan. We've got engine on the ground, flywheel on the engine, this axle stand braced against that bolt in the flywheel, which would hopefully stop the engine turning over. And then of course, usual shit around the other side. Breaker bar, bolt, you know. Not worried about damaging the flywheel and all of this, as on the advice of everyone from last time, we're going to be replacing that anyway. So let's see how it goes. And of course, lifting with the groin and lower back in a jerking, twisting motion. Oh, angered. Yeah, that's just lifting the whole engine up. Fucking hell. Right. New plan needed. New plan, hit it with a hammer. Bad plan. So the problem is, turning that is lifting the engine up. So I'm going to try and put some weight on the engine, while also trying to keep myself out of the way of a potentially falling engine, and pushing down on this. It is not working. Alright, I'm going to go and read some YouTube comments and see what other ideas there were. So, it's back to fabric cobbling shit out of angle iron. Got this bolted onto the flywheel and then, you can see there, braced on another bolt. And I'm hoping, as that's longer, it will mean it will require more leverage to lift the engine up, so it would give me more torque, moment, I don't know. I feel like it'll work in my head. Let's see. So the breaker bar I've been using is 60 centimeters long. This is a one meter length of box section with some extensions in it, so it's over double the length. Maybe this will help. Fucking worked! Oh my god! I've done it! <laughs> that was far too difficult, Toyota. England may not have won the World Cup, but I've finally undone this bolt, and I think that's the real victory. This is my World Cup. Mostly because I hate football. Now I'm going to get the pulley off, and for that, I actually bought a tool. This thing, two fucking days. But we done it. It is free. So now I can remove the lower timing cover. Well, one thing while we're here, we get a lot of comments telling us to use penetrating oil, um, which I appreciate it, you know, it's good advice. But the thing is, we live in coastal England, which is basically the rust capital of the world. We always <laughs> use penetrating oil. Don't need to worry about that. And this may look like just WD, but it's actually their own penetrating stuff that I find to be pretty damn good. God, this cover is actually quite cracked. I might just try and replace it. And it's missing a bolt there. Excellent. 
I don't remember the usernames, but for everyone who gave us advice on how to get that bolt off, particularly, you know, about putting it on the ground and bracing the flywheel on the other side, thank you, it worked. Um, I remember someone said to sort of make a longer breaker bar out of a bit of box section. And it all worked together, so thank you, Hive Mind. I'm glad we have such knowledgeable viewers, because I could have been stuck on that for years. All right, I'm going to go down some lunch, and we'll get this bad boy on the stand and look into doing the timing belt. All right, so got the engine back on the stand. Now it's time to change timing belt, water pump, idler, all that kind of crap. So. Got everything at top dead centre. Just counted all the teeth along this belt between the tops of these two pulleys. I've got 18 teeth, so I can remember that when it comes to putting the new cam belt on, make sure everything is timed properly. Now this guide is um, concave outwards, if that makes sense. I've got to remember which side, or you can kind of see there's teeth marks there, so it goes on that way. So I should be able to take the tension out of the tensioner by tightening this bolt. Yes, that is in. Okay. Now I'm going to release it. Aha! We have a loose timing belt. Success. Right. Oddly, manual says 3mm um, Allen key to do that. I can only get a 1mm in, so she's tighter than she looks. Okay, we're clear. Trying to make sure that nothing, this is the crankshaft, I don't think it's going to spin, but the camshafts might, so. Right. Now, as is, you know, repeatedly said, we're not experts, but I actually think this cam belt doesn't look too bad. Obviously we've got the replacement, so we're going to use it, but I can't see any issues with it at all. It actually looks fairly new, so. Well, can't hurt to replace it. So these are all the new parts we ordered. We have a new timing belt, new tensioner pulley, new idler pulley, and new water pumps. So that's what we're going to need for this right now. Which reminds me, I need to do a budget update. It's been a while, but we actually spent some money on the car. We can start with what I assume is the easiest one, and that's just this idler pulley. Don't know how you can see there, it's looking a bit sort of cracked and dry on the inside, but bearing wise it feels great, but never hurts to replace it. Now I know this one came off this way, but I actually can't see, they're not identical, and I can't see any real difference on either side, so I'm going to assume it can go either direction. As long as it doesn't rub, it shouldn't be a problem. Job one is done. Nice smooth idler. Next up will be the tensioner, I think. Old tensioner. And again, that one feels really good. I'm starting to suspect this was all done very recently, but Got the parts, got the engine out, may as well do it again. Tensioner bolt calls for a little bit of Loctite. Bolt goes in tensioner. Washer goes on the other side. So, my final trick. It is the water pump. Right, 
So I've decided to call it a day for now, as for some reason I didn't print out the instructions for the water pump. Uh, I don't want to get it wrong. It seems like the whole assembly moves, and so maybe I'm meant to take that off. There's some extra gaskets and O-rings in the kit that I suspect are for that. So rather than do it wrong, I'm going to stop here, uh, go home, print out the instructions of the water manual, and come back another water manual. Print out the manual for the water pump, come back another day and finish that off. For the first time since the wedding episode, it is time for a budget update. Now, the last time we did this, we were at £1,456.46. We actually forgot to update this a while ago with the £2 for that little bit of plastic to change the clock colour from green to blue. So there's that. And then in this episode, there was £34.74 for a water pump and £117 for a timing belt kit. So our current total is £1,614.20. That's it for now. We'll be back soon to finish the water pump and hopefully get some other stuff done. Thanks for watching. The last MR2 video, um, both about our big new... Fuck's sake, shut up. Well, that worked. I have magical bird powers.